Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana, and today we are returning to the wonderful world of realistic spacecraft weapon systems with a look at lasers. We've already covered kinetics, missiles and nukes, so go check out those cool videos if you haven't already, and subscribe now for a future video on particle beams. As you may already know, LASER is an acronym, standing for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. This means you put photons into a gain medium, which excites the atoms in it, which then emit more photons identical to the original one. All these photons are bounced back and forth between mirrors, making even more photons, but one of the mirrors is partially transparent and lets out some of them in the form of a laser beam. This photon copy-pasting that goes on is what makes lasers better than normal light, which is messy, goes in all sorts of directions, and is made of all sorts of frequencies mixed together. Laser light is none of those things, and instead has three special qualities. It is coherent, where different parts of the beam are all related, monochromatic, it's all the same wavelength, and collimated, all going in the same direction. It is also possible to combine multiple smaller lasers into one larger one, with every sub-laser having a very slightly different frequency so that they don't all interfere with each other. The reason you'd even bother doing this is that making one big laser is more difficult than just combining a hundred smaller ones together. There's a lot of types of laser generators. They are very complex things with significant variations in technologies and capabilities, but we can simplify things down to those most applicable for weapons, chemical and electric. Electric lasers can be run indefinitely if they have the electrical energy they need fed to them as they tend to use gain mediums that aren't used up when fired. The downside is providing enough power to run them, but that at least can come from all sorts of places. In contrast, chemical lasers provide the fuel for the initial photons as well as the gain medium, which means they can be very powerful but have the downside of using up those fuels, and the chemicals used can be a tiny bit horribly toxic. This was one of a number of downsides of the Boeing YAL-1 Airborne Laser Testbed, which was an experiment into installing a megawatt-class chemical laser into a 747 for use against ballistic missiles. Unfortunately, while it looks incredibly cool, it wasn't very practical as the laser would need refueling more often than the jet would, and it used a very fun mixture of chlorine, iodine, hydrogen peroxide and potassium hydroxide. The aircraft would also need to be fairly close to the missiles it was supposed to be shooting down as they launched, which isn't ideal for a defence system. There was a follow-on concept that was intended to have longer range thanks to being put on an aircraft flying significantly higher. This would have put the beam above more of the atmosphere, which does all sorts of things to lasers that reduces their power. Along the range of typical lasers, there are certain wavelengths of light that are absorbed far less, but there's also some that have such high frequencies they are relegated to vacuum use only. While talking about laser frequencies, I want to say that unless your laser uses visible light, it's going to be invisible to the human eye. Lasers are often infrared or ultraviolet, which need special cameras or filters in order to be seen, but this only applies in an atmosphere which is full of atoms and molecules for the beam to hit. Up in vacuum, they will be completely invisible to everything, unless you happen to be looking straight down the beam into the emitter, in which case you won't be seeing for very much longer. You probably already know that lasers have a supremely long range in space combat thanks to travelling at light speed. Their only limiting factor is diffraction, which is a weird thing that makes the beam's focus point increase in size over time as it moves away from the weapon. The power being transferred to the target doesn't drop over distance, it instead gets spread out over more surface area, leading it to be slower at dealing damage. This damage is done in one of two ways, either just heating up something over long periods of time from a continuous wave laser, which eventually leads to vaporisation of the target, basically cooking off its outer layer. The other damage type is a sort of drilling effect from pulsed lasers. This happens due to mechanical shock from short periods of extremely high heating, so you get more bang for your buck from a laser that is essentially turned off half the time it's firing. You'll also notice that firing different lengths of pulses also has a big effect as well. Another limit on laser damage is the accuracy of the weapon. There's a few things working against the accuracy of super long-range weapons, starting with simply not knowing precisely where your target is. Sensors are not perfect, they're not going to know with 100% certainty exactly where the target is, which way it is facing, and which way it is travelling. Light is fast, but not instant, so this target uncertainty mixed with light lag makes keeping a laser 
beam on the same spot to keep burning away at it a bit of a challenge. This is exacerbated further at extreme range by something called jitter. This is the inherent inaccuracy caused by things moving imperfectly, and other little jolts and bumps from even tiny movements like people walking around, or vibrations from machinery or thermal expansion. Nothing is perfectly still, nothing moves with perfect smoothness. There's always that wobble, that jitter in every system, and that is going to limit the ability of a laser to stay on one spot on its target as it needs to do. This can be tidied up a little bit with compensation systems built into the targeting system, which brings me nicely to laser turrets, which are super cool because they aren't really the weapon itself. You can have your big laser generator system buried away deep inside your ship, which then routes its output between multiple turrets. A laser weapon using multiple turrets can very efficiently engage multiple targets in different directions by switching the beam between those turrets that are each pre-aimed at something. Essentially, you'd have one weapon that can instantly switch aim point. This is also great for if one turret gets damaged, as you can just use a different one. Speaking of turret damage, it is possible to shoot into a laser with another laser to mess it up, but this has so many caveats and possibilities and countermeasures that it's a toss-up whether it'll actually work or not. Are the target's optics protected behind a shield? Are they at the right distance and angle for the mirror system to actually be damaged? Does counter-battery laser fire even work? If it does work in your setting, then there's a big advantage in combat to having your lasers uncovered when approaching an enemy whose gun ports are closed. The second they open to fire their lasers at you, you have already started firing at theirs to damage them. Just be careful not to misinterpret things and accidentally cause a war. What other defences are there against lasers? Well, the first one is just putting something between you and it, like a smokescreen. In atmosphere, this works great, but in vacuum, it'll just dissipate into nothingness, leaving you high and dry. The other obvious defensive measure is mirror shielding, but this works less well than you might think, because mirrors are bad at radiating heat away. Lasers work by inputting heat energy, and while a mirror does send some of that away, it'll still keep hold of what it can't reflect. This is an issue, but can be dealt with by some active cooling. An even better way of negating the power of lasers is to exploit their need to attack one small spot by increasing the surface area of your ship. The simplest way to do that is what every War Thunder player understands, angled armour. A laser dot on a flat, perpendicular surface is the smallest it can be. It can transfer all of its power onto one point and burn through it. However, a laser dot on a heavily angled surface is going to be stretched, potentially by a lot. You can even mix this with the mirror armour to get some crazy pointy ships that can shrug off laser fire, at least until they get to short ranges, but that's when other weapon types also become more viable. So the long range of lasers makes things around them have to adapt somewhat to counter that, which can have a detrimental effect on a setting if that is not what the creator wants to happen. This is probably why The Expanse avoided lasers except for that one on the Nauvoo or Behemoth or whatever you want to call it. They do have another downside though, heat. Lasers create a lot of heat, because they are pretty inefficient, which is bad because hot laser systems are less focused and have a shorter range because of that. It is possible to compensate for this by just making the weapon larger for the same power output, spreading the heat load out, but it still has to go somewhere. Chemical lasers can sort of deal with this by expelling their used fuels and the heat stored in them, but they have limited shots. Electrical ones have it even worse because of the added heat demands of the power generation system on top of everything else, so a realistic full electric laser system will need a bunch of radiators to keep cool. With all that said though, technology marches onward, and it is possible that future laser weapons will have a lot less waste heat. Still, don't skimp on your spaceship radiators though, because radiators look awesome. We're going to have a future video on just how awesome radiators are, so subscribe to be notified when that goes out. One last thing on lasers, specifically on super duper long range ones that can be used as a strategic level weapon. Just like how telescopes get better and can see further with larger optics, lasers can also increase their range and effectiveness by doing the same thing. The downside is these big chonker focusing optics will get so large it'll be near impossible to actually move them around to aim, but there is a way around this, multiple stages of focusing array. Rather than making one giganormous focusing system that could hit a ship across a star system, you can daisy chain the beam through a number of more practical focusing arrays. Slap a bunch of these throughout a solar system and you can have one laser weapon, perhaps down near the sun for all the free energy, that can direct its beam all over the place. There are downsides to the system, if you want to know about them you can look up Laser Weapon Web to find out more details on this concept. 
The plus side is you don't even have to use this as a weapon either. It's very applicable for laser propulsion, just like on the ISV Venture Star. That thing spends six months riding on a laser cell as it leaves or enters the solar system. And yeah, this sail is multiple kilometers across, so it doesn't quite need the same focus as a weapon would, but it's still going to be pretty far away from the laser emitters at max distance. You can also use lasers as sensors, communications, or for power transfer. If you want to make something that leans a bit more towards the real while keeping things different from just guns and missiles, consider the laser. Just remember the knock-on effects that such long-range weapons can have on things like spacecraft design and combat styles. Thanks for watching our video on laser weapons. If you enjoy this sort of content, let me know in the comments below and consider supporting Space Dogs directly through becoming a channel member or by giving us super thanks. You can also join our Patreon like these fantastic people on screen. Thanks for supporting us if you do, and I'll see you next time.